Radeon 7, it's here for testing, gladly, and today we're going to take a closer look at the card, discuss why it exists, and also some expectations for performance benchmarks. So no performance numbers just yet, that will come on February 7th, so just about three days from when you guys are seeing this. I haven't even actually tested the card, so these are just my sort of fresh first impressions on what we can expect. In the performance review, we will compare the Radeon 7 to several other GPUs on the market, including the RTX 2080 and also Radeon's previous flagship, the Vega 64. So spec-wise, we are getting what looks like a perfect fit for a budget workstation card, relatively speaking, of course. Radeon 7 comes with four less compute units compared to Vega 64, yielding a little over 6% less unified shaders and texture mapping units, and boost clock is said to be 1750 megahertz with a peak of 1800. The memory system is why some independent production users might be excited about Radeon 7 for a budget workstation card, as here we are getting a significant amount of bandwidth and capacity. Now, at CES, we were actually expecting some news on Navi, the 7 nanometer successor to second generation Vega, but instead AMD decided to repurpose their existing graphics accelerator, the Radeon Instinct MI50. That explains the choice to go with the colossal 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory as well. It in fact wasn't a choice at all. This is because the stacks of HBM2 memory are built on the same interposer as the GPU, so it's not as easy as just cutting the memory in half and just rewiring it. Of course, an 8GB model of the Radeon 7 could exist and uh, it would cost less from what we know of the cost of HBM2 memory. It is quite uh, expensive. I read an article the other day estimating the cost of the 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory in the Radeon 7 to be around 350 US dollars uh, if you were to purchase the HBM2 memory yourself. Anyway, going off on a bit of a tangent here, an 8 gigabyte model could exist. However, the research and development costs to build a new interposer with an 8 gigabyte memory configuration compared to the 16 gigabyte memory configuration, which was already on the Instinct MI50, would be quite significant. The current pricing at 699 US dollars does put it directly against Nvidia's RTX 2080 reference models out there. And from what AMD have said, uh, we can expect it to be on par with its performance in gaming. Of course, we will confirm whether that is the case when we actually get around to testing. Either way, AMD's primary marketing play here is on HBM2 and the benefits that that will yield over cards like the RTX 2070 and 2080 in production workloads. The Vega 56 and 64 both use HBM2 memory as well, although with half the bus width and with also a slightly lower boost clock, and I've seen those GPUs absolutely tear through production level workloads in Blender. And on a visual note, I'm really happy with the way uh, Radeon 7 looks aesthetically. I'd be more than happy to rock this in my system. The silver is quite a nice finish. It's uh, sandblasted or anodized, I believe. Very similar to what we've seen with the silver Vega 64, although there was brushed. I really like the anodized finish uh, personally. And regarding the triple fan cooler, I believe this will be a pretty good move from AMD. It's very similar to what we've seen, you know, from Nvidia moving away from their blower uh, reference style design. AMD seem to be doing the same thing. So hopefully that does provide some much needed cooling for that 300 watt TDP. Because as we know, the reference style Vega 56 and 64 were horrible when it came to cooling. So this is great to see for a stock card from AMD. And board partners are expecting to launch aftermarket models, but so far all we've seen online are rebranded models of AMD's original triple fan design. So since that is the case, I think it's worth taking a closer look at. It's a two slot card measuring 268 millimeters long and 121 millimeters tall from the bottom of the PCI Express tab. It's only slightly bigger than the old Vega reference design, so that's great to see. To achieve that triple fan layout though, in a shorter cooler, AMD did have to compromise on the size of the fans. Whereas larger cards like the ASUS Strix uses 90mm fans, the Radeon 7 only uses 75mm fans, so thermal performance should be interesting. You've also got a Radeon logo at the top of the card which illuminates red, as well as the red cube on the top right hand corner. So guys, that's pretty much all that we can discuss before the review goes live. I uh, definitely don't want to breach that review embargo. I did ask AMD if I could tear down the card and disassemble it, but unfortunately the answer was no. So that will have to wait as well. 
So guys, let me know your thoughts on Radeon 7 and if there's anything specifically that you wanna see tested, feel free to drop that down in the comments below because I know this is more of a production workload focused GPU. So if you have any production workloads or programs that you have in mind that you wanna see tested, drop those down in the comment section and I'll check those out. So guys, a huge thanks for watching. Consider subscribing down below if you haven't already and I'll see you on February 7th for the full review.